Hello. So today we actually have something that's very modern. It's uh, just came out this earlier this month, um, as you all know, and it is the creator, not expert anymore because they've gotten rid of that designation, the creator for adults, 10273 Haunted House. Um, it's 3,231 pieces, retails for $249.99. And as you can see, it is one of the first sets that now has the official 18 and up designation. So I'm going to start this review um, by actually talking a little bit about the box itself, which, to be honest, I'm one of those people. I don't care about the box. I don't get the boxes for the most part. And usually it's not as significant for me. But as I mentioned, this is officially the first, but among the first sets that are part of this new adult-oriented packaging and adult-oriented marketing, if you will. So it's a very high-quality imagery. It exudes a lot more of a more sophisticated type set, and by extension, a sophisticated type buyer, which is you. There's a lot more of a imagery that kind of explains more about the set. We don't have that creator logo anymore. It just says Haunted House. And this is going to be sort of the, the branding going forward. We're not really going to see creator X. What do you get for dollars You get this very massive. Very interesting, but still ultimately a fairground ride. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty big. It is 26 and a half inches tall by 10 inches wide. Yes. So, I mean, you're getting pretty good height and size out of this. And this is a set that I found fascinating uh, because it can fit not just in your fairground if you have one, especially if you've purchased previous Creator Expert Fairground Series sets, but this could just as easily work with modification, uh, possibly even without, if you really wanted to, in your average LEGO city. And this is getting at Creator Expert modular building size, and it really does fit very well with that aesthetic. So in addition to the set, of course, you also have a variety of different minifigures. I apologize in advance um, for those of you who may have seen what the figures look like. You may notice that some of them uh, are a little bit switched around, and that's because Cam found out that she can pretty much make a brown-haired version of herself using the minifigures on hand, uh, which was very, very clever. We also have um, another wheelchair that comes in the set. We don't get too many of these, but it's nice to see them being more inclusive. Uh, another interesting little call out for this is that this particular minifigure character is wearing the Letterman jacket from the Newberry High School squids. Newberry High School, of course, being uh, from Hidden Side. So that's an interesting little call out, little meta in joke as well, um, which I thought was very interesting. I don't know if they intended it to be because this is spooky if it was supposed to cross into that or they're just really trying to advertise hidden side all that much more, whatever, but still clever. And then you have a couple other fun characters. Um, I like the puffy 80s style jacket that this guy has, very uh, Matt Healy-esque. So those are always fun. And then we got the, the dark sort of leather jacket. It's Rockstar Karen. <laughs> yes. She'd like to see your manager. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then we also have the fairground workers. We have these creepy looking twins, which are basically top hat knees that work there. And they are supposed to be twins according to triplets. the uh, his triplets, but I'll get into that in a moment. And then we have these fun little ghosts, which is a new design. Um, this is a double, well, this is a double printed head. So yes, it does come in happy and sad there as well, just to give you some they don't glow in the dark, though. Yes, unfortunately, these are not the glow-in-the-dark kind. They just have these simple, you know, hoods like we've always had from before and the uh, the dress sort of skirted uh, brick from the bottom there that we've seen in sets past. So not bad, but again, 
they're going for a different style. Is Ivan still on? Ivan, how do you feel about those ghosts, Ivan? I don't like those ghosts. With that said, let's get into the uh, set here. We'll see what we got, quite literally. Now, one of the interesting things is that this is going to dollhouse, as you can see, and opens up. And what you actually get is a pretty interesting series of callbacks and little Easter egg type features that, for me at least, definitely are meant to appeal. And you get it. They are absolutely designed to appeal to the adult fan base. This set is, in a lot of ways, this set is a fan service. This is the kind of set that you are basically buying because of those little aha moments and those, you know, little callbacks that it has. Now, the story behind the set is that this is the home of the Baron von Baron, who some of you may remember from the old Adventurers theme back in the late 90s. He was the titular bad guy from that era. Some of you also may remember him as Sam Sinister, but they have retconned him into being uh, Samuel von Baron, or the Baron von Baron. You can push the button. Yes. So <laughs> push the button. So push the button, Burn. Okay. So I will call out here before I push the button that everything you see here is printed. So there are no stickers in this set, which is pretty nice. So one of the really cool things is that you get a nice little light brick that has a really cool little effect here for the mural. This is actually a large uh, glass piece that's printed. Then there is a smaller four by three by one glass piece inside of that just behind to create that glowing effect. You may be able to see there. Other fun printed pieces include one by two tile keys down here for the organ. Yes, there we are. How's that? These are brand new. They are one by two tiles. So for those of you who want to create a piano, uh, you get a much nicer uh option than the one by fours from before which I, I felt were a bit awkward to work with uh moving over to the right this is another callback to the adventures the obelisk um this actually in hieroglyphics actually spells lego as it turns out which is funny and then there are a bunch of other tchotchkes and things like that that uh are also callbacks to various adventurers themes in fact, one of the fun facts about this is that as you build, the instructions actually have little callouts in them that explain, well, this is the uh, this is the golden dingus, and this is the you know the obelisk of I forget what it was, but it's just it's it actually called a dingus. He's not making that up. Yeah, it's actually real. Again, you get the sphinx head here again from the adventurers. You get some other fun little callbacks, nice chandelier using the candle pieces. As well, one of my favorite things, and this is one that can be easily overlooked, and we want to move the camera for that, is that they actually recreated some of the classic uh, 1980s, 90s computer panels here for the, I guess, control center for the main attraction, which is the elevator or the Tower basically of Tower of Terror. Obviously, being a fairground set, it has to be a ride, and ultimately, that's exactly what it is. So your minifigures will enter through the door, which has its own automated mechanism for opening and closing the doors here on the side just by a simple knob, which is delightful. And upon entering, they can get their tickets, and then they take a ride on the Tower of Terror. Now, the cool thing is that you again get this old school style uh, car chassis. Uh, again, nice little callback to the adventures, and it's done up in a roller coaster style ride with the bar to keep them safe. Now, this will clip right in to the elevator uh, from the rear. There's just a simple one, one by one clip down there, and it just comes right in. Now, the mechanism for it is surprisingly sophisticated for what you get. I'm going to turn this around so you actually see how it all works. Now, keep in mind, this can actually use powered up. Uh, we don't actually have enough motors to run this today. So sad. sadly, it will all have to be hand cranked. But you have a couple of these new rubberized flywheels here, which are 
I think, a pretty clever part. And then a long chain to kind of lift everything up. Uh, you can see there would be, again, two motors. One would go here. Now, there is sort of a stop. And they use a transmission gear to kind of ensure that it stops halfway through. And then the other main drive gear or drive motor would actually go here on this side. I'm sure everybody wants to see how the whole thing actually works. We start off by cranking. Now I'm, I apologize if it's not the smoothest with this, but it will work. There it goes. And you see the window up there as they get towards the top. Nice thing is I am not cranking it. I am not holding it. It will hold its uh, position there as it makes its way up to the top. And then as it gets to the very top, it will trigger these doors to open. Just very simple mechanics there. As it gets all the way to the top and then boom. And as you can see, it arrests itself as it's going down for the use of those flywheels, basically as, acting as a buffer for a nice soft landing at the bottom. Despite, and you can hear it, you know, some of the crankiness of it, it's not really a good descriptor, but it does work reasonably well, all things considered. And you can do it again and again and again. Sometimes the flywheels do take a moment, but again, for the most part, it works. And I'm sure with repeated use, the plastic might loosen up a little bit for it to uh, operate a little bit more smoothly. But by and large, this is a lot of fun just to play around with. And again, there's enough suitably fun things in here that you can enjoy it just by looking at it and go, oh, that's from that, as much as it is just having, oh, look at it go. In a nutshell, that's basically the haunted house. But that also leads me to kind of my conclusion about this. Is this a builder? This thing has so many fun little callbacks, little unique gotcha moments, and it has a lot of fun and interesting details about it that it does make it a fun build unto itself. Now, I will freely admit that the actual structure isn't anything special. It's still a house. There's not a whole lot of new, new parts in here, um, but there's a lot of new color. And you get a lot of, especially this, obviously, drab green, which is very, very nice. And a lot of people will appreciate that for making their own building mocks and that kind of thing. And those are the kind of things that do also appeal to adults as well. So is this worth building? I absolutely think so. And I can vouch for Cam here that we both had a lot of fun putting this together. I love the roof line. I love how yeah. the roof line comes together and how it attaches. Mm -hmm. It was really clever the way they put those hips and valleys together and tied it into the building. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there is, it is absolutely worthwhile. And by extension, does that mean is this a parter? Is this a set that's actually worth parting out? Only if you had multiple. There are a lot of great parts for people to create their own mocks. And one of the things that I would love to see, and I'm sure is happening as we speak, if it hasn't already, is that people may very well remove the Tower of Terror option from this and just make a Mayor Von Baron actual mansion out of it and just have fun with that on its own. And personally, I probably would do something like that someday with this. I could easily see this being remocked into something along those lines. I would want to because the parts are worthwhile. I wouldn't say that this is probably the best part out set. I mean, $250 for basically 3,200 pieces is decent value for money. It's a little bit more than that 10 cents per piece that we all aim for. But at the same time, when you figure that there isn't a single sticker in here and you get some pretty unique parts, it actually does make it reasonably good value for money overall. I can definitely make a case either way for a part out, but for the most part, this is more of a bill route. And that leads us to the last part. Is this set a keeper? I mean, what's the resale value of something like this set? That's a really interesting question right now. Now, historically, we've seen a lot of these creator fairground sets do really well on the secondary market. Just ask anyone who's now on the hunt for a scrambler or even a uh, Ferris wheel or something along those lines. Certainly the original 
uh, merry-go-round with the sound brick that nobody can seem to find is any indication. You know, this is the kind of set that I think the adult collectors are really going to go for because it's specifically designed to appeal to them. So would this set be something that you would want to score away? $250, it's certainly not the cheapest option, but it still represents probably a better value for money overall and something that could be a decent return on investment a lot sooner than, say, a UCS set. Does anybody want to see this compared to the old one, the old Haunted House? So to be fair, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. The the base of this we did for Bing Comic Con. So that doesn't come with it, right? It's just the house. I can pull this off of here. Yes. Yeah. Got okay. okay. it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Trade it. There's a lot of extra detail on this one. It doesn't come with all these figs. For example, uh, this was one of the Build-A-Mini figures around Halloween time this year. On the top, we've got Abraham Lincoln, vampire hunter, chasing a vampire, and then another bat demon creature fleeing for its life. Uh, I put a skunk on the railing because, you know, reasons. This itself also dollhouses, uh, and it's got some some really cool... Yeah, we, put, we, we definitely put Scooby-Doo in there. We've got... <laughs> And, and assorted friends. Uh, so it's got a lot of similarities. It doesn't have specific throwbacks to anything in particular, but it does have uh, similarities in terms of just the demarcation from different sections and what's going on and staircases that lead from one place to another. And uh, it's, it's got some really fun playable features, just things where you can hide ghosts and ghouls and uh, some interesting things hanging on the wall. Old, uh, what do you call that? Gramophone. A gramophone. <laughs> and, you know, a, a random heads and whatnot. But this was fun. This is, what year is this one from? 2012. 2012, yeah. So, and you can see that it definitely uses the old, yeah, sand green, which is uh, highly sought after these days. But uh, that was really fun. It's got a lot of good detail work with the boards on the windows and whatnot. But side by side, uh, you can see just for comparison purposes, you get a lot more out of the haunted mansion, but you have more depth to the old haunted house, right? So there's no there's no technic in this one. There's no moving parts or or playability in that regard, but there's still a lot of really cool elements. So I love them both. Halloween's like my favorite holiday, so I will have these probably displayed all year round in various states of play, and uh, they're really fun. Eventually. The way I did for this one, where I built out a graveyard and a base, I'll probably do something for this one too that'll give it a little bit more space to work with. And I don't know, maybe we'll have we'll have something like pop out of there before it drops or something fun like that. We'll see. So, thank you for your awesome review, Brian.